six. If anybody wants to participate and get your own Bible, I'm going to say a prayer before we get started. Lord, I come before you this morning and I ask you, dear God, that you would just lead us and guide us as we go through your word this morning. I pray, dear Lord, that you will bless this message and that if you can reach anyone in their situations, Lord, I ask you that the Holy Spirit would draw those to your message. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> okay. This is going to be a message on the bread of life. 1 John 6, 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me, not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. I want to ask you if this morning, if you can relate to that situation where you've ever been in a relationship, or, you know, even maybe just a boss or something, where you feel dependent upon them, and you're, you're seeking that relationship, and you're seeking that, that, um, existing relation there because you're dependent upon them for providing they're, you're you want them you're desiring them it's like the best way I can describe that is a relationship where you love your spouse because they go to work and they pay the bills that you think you love them because they go to work and they pay the bills they provide they do all of these things that are materialistic but it's not really in your heart because love is love should be unconditional Real love, no matter what is there, no matter the, the home, the finances, the health, no matter what it is, it is unconditional. You love each other regardless. Do you have that on the side? Is that working? <clears throat> okay, verse 27. Same chapter, same book, John 6, verse 27. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. So he's saying not to labor in vain. What is vain labor? Well, that is the work of our hands that we are, I'm going to say that that is um, what we work for in life, to pay our bills. Everything that we just went over in the last verse, you know, to feed ourselves, to to gain, it's greed. All of that is in vain. Whenever we die, we won't take those things with us. But there is a labor that is different. Whenever you labor for the Lord, whenever you serve the Lord, you offer yourself freely. And something that I've been coming across is really horrific is how many people I've seen lately that they are serving in the church, but they're becoming exhausted. They're becoming uh, wore out and then they're leaving the church because they've literally turned it into work. If you're not doing something out of your heart, don't do it. God loves a cheerful giver. He wants us to do things that flow from our heart. It should not be from the sweat of our brow. We work the land from the sweat of our brow, but serving the Lord is not like that. His yoke is easy. How do you know what to do for the Lord? Your heart will be moved in you. And, and if you ask the Lord inside of yourself, your heart will be moved with compassion. And if you're not moved with compassion, either one, you shouldn't do it, or two, you've got some, a heart problem that needs to be worked on between you and the Lord. And only you and the Lord know because it is about your relationship with Him. Verse 28. Then say they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered unto them, This is the work of God, that ye, sh that ye believe on him who he hath sent. Who did God send? He sent Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ left with us the Holy Spirit to intercede. This is the works of God. This is the works of God. They said therefore unto him, What sign shewest, shewest thou a then, <laughs> that we may see and believe thee? What do, what dost thou work? Our fathers did eat men in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father given you the true bread from heaven. I want to stop there, and I want to show you again and to point out that Jesus is saying, you are following a leader, you're following someone, and you think, and with your carnal eyes, you believe that they are your provider. You believe that they are the one that has given you the blessings of God. But surely God is the great provider. God is the provider. And without God, there would be nothing provided. The Lord is the one who provides for you. The Lord decides when you start a job, when you end a job, when you what you receive in your relationship. The Lord is the one that is in control of all of these things. The world is like an ocean tide. It is constantly turning over. Things in life continuously change to keep things fresh and new. The Lord is constantly cleansing us. And He wants us to cling to Him. He is our rock. He is our solid ground. He is our firm foundation. He is our stability. Amen. Stability is not what you think it is. It's not a carnal thing that you get to stay in the same house for many years. It's not that you get to stay with the same job for many years. It's not even that people will remain in your life for many years and that they will not leave you. Stability is your peace in Christ. It is knowing and relying upon God that He will provide, that He will be there, and that we have an eternity in a salvation in heaven. He is the bread of life. Uh-oh, may I have lost my place. <clears throat> Verse 34, Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. Did I read this? Oh, I'm going to back up just because I'm not sure. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. <clears throat> For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. I'm not sure if I addressed that verse 33, but Jesus is saying, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. <clears throat> but I said unto you, oh, no, that was where I was going to leave, that ye also have seen me and believe not. <clears throat> Here's something that the Lord is impressing me upon my heart to share with you. Whenever, at the beginning of this year, whenever I was ordained and certified and licensed into the ministry to celebrate, I took my son and we went to all these and we gathered up seven bags of food and we went to people's houses that, that were, we believed they could use the food and there wasn't many people home so we had to improvise and we had to keep moving forward. The first very interesting person that we gave food to that was not a house that we knocked on, but it was a person walking down the street. He turned, he was drunk. We didn't know, but he was drunk. And it turned out that he had been in seminary school, that he had studied in the ministry and he was an ordained minister many years prior, but he had left it. And he said that he left it for all the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh is what got him. It's what pulled him away from the ministry and and it, sitting in sitting there with him, he could quote you the whole Bible. With beer rolling off of his beard, he quoted the Bible like like a G. That's the only thing I could think my son would use that word. But he was he was on top of it. It is and it reminded me that no matter how much you study the word of God, no matter how much you dig into it, no matter what you you Learn. If you don't apply it, your faith without works is dead. And it will. The works of the flesh will pull you away. Now, the last person that we went to. Well, it was, it was a second before last because we ended up giving the food to somebody else. We pulled up to this house. And I knew that during Christmas, this family, they had six children. And they, the children didn't even get anything for Christmas. They had nothing. And um, we... I stopped there, and the mother was outside. I didn't know these people, but I went up to her. I told her we're celebrating, um, going into the ministry, and 
I had this food and the woman nearly breaking down into tears turned away from me and she said, no. I was like, okay, well maybe you know somebody else who wants this food. No. She wouldn't look at me. She stared off to the side. She was, she was, she blocked me out. It was horrible. I got back in the car. I couldn't understand why would this woman deny food for her children knowing that she needed it. It was, it was hard. I was almost crying. She was almost crying. I left. The next day, the kids come to me and they said that, that, that after we left, that sometime, I think it was in the evening or the afternoon code. Evening? Okay. So in the evening, that same woman took off. I guess she pulled the car over and she took off and she left all six children and took off running into the woods and didn't come back. And these are not bigger children. These are very small children. I believe the youngest is, what, a year old maybe? They, and yeah. Victoria's okay. 12. Okay, Victoria, the oldest one was 12. Is she the one to call the cops? So the oldest one, mom left the phone in the car and the oldest one took the phone and um, called the cops and, uh, and they came out and got the kids. And then they had to contact the father and that woman went to prison. Come to find out, she was on drugs. I couldn't tell. <laughs> but it reminded me that sometimes we think <clears throat> that we want to provide for people. We see things in the carnal, we see things in the flesh and we think these people need food. The kids need presents for Christmas. They, they need a turkey for Thanksgiving. They need all of these things, you know. We want to provide it. But really, there are things that people need that go beyond that carnal expectation that we have, that go beyond the flesh. They need counseling. They need guidance. They need the Word of God. They need the bread of life. And the bread of life is not a loaf of bread, but it is Jesus Christ. This is what people need. And I see these children, we all are seeing these children, pictures of dead children popping up on Facebook in other countries, and it's devastating. It is devastating to watch all of these families that are in dire need, little children in starvation crawling on their bellies across the land and, and literally perishing before our eyes. And I don't know, it moves me with compassion that I just want to go over there, I want to send food, and yet you know there's so much greed that you don't even know who's receiving on the other end and unless you put your hands to do the work yourself you don't know if it's going to get done that is a very hard thing to struggle with but whenever it comes right down to it the lord is saying that what these people need goes beyond the measure of material and food it goes beyond what we see with the carnal eyes it is spiritual it is a spiritual freedom it is the word of god it is the Word of God that structures life. Our world has fallen apart and fallen out of, out of order through sin. And it will only come back into order whenever we cast out the sin. Whenever we ourselves individually repent and turn away. Mama, would you like to share something or close us out with prayer? I believe in have blessed me and people in all this world. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for um, another day to just worship you and um, as we turn over um, things that do not please you, Father, and um, we, as we are being drawn nearer to you, Lord, um, that uh, you are, you, you have your children, Lord, um, out working and, um, and bringing those that are lost, Lord, in their sins unto you, Lord. And we just ask you, Father, to bless everyone around the, in our nation, nationwide, Lord. We just ask you, Father God, that you will put your arms around us and, and stay, Lord, in control and stay close by us, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord, for um, feeding us um, and giving us Christ, Lord, who we, who we reach out to. And we know, dear God, as we seek you and... Um, and that you are close to us, dear God, that you are also with us. And I just ask you, Father, to just um, bless each one of us. Um, in, your, in Christ's name I pray, amen. Amen. Have a blessed day.